Okay, so welcome to my new channel. Now, I can't really claim, as I do in my channel description, to be exposing stupidity without actually taking a crack at the most retarded people on the globe, the Flat Earthers. And I thought, what better way to start than with the most viewed Flat Earth video on YouTube. Odd TV's A Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth, with over 1 million views to date. Now, the video is him asking 21 actually very reasonable questions asked of flat earthers and then hilarity ensues when he actually tries to answer them. Well, this should be easy. Let's all together try and debunk this guy's answers to 21 fairly reasonable questions. Okay, here we go. Strap in folks, we are going for a bumpy ride. So where's the edge? Who's to say that there is an edge, and why assume there is one? Okay, so according to him, there is no edge. Ah, so he's one of the infinite plane flat earthers. Hmm, good to know which kind we are debunking today. Okay buddy, so where is your proof of the earth going on forever? Been on an expedition beyond the ice wall, have you? Or do you have pictures or calculation on how that would work? Or are we, as I suspect, just dealing with pure speculation here? In the currently most accepted model, Antarctica is not a continent, but a 360 degree land mass made up of ice that holds the oceans within. Ah, the ice walls circumnavigating the Earth. This would actually be the easiest claim of the Flat Earthers to prove, if it were true, because the difference in travel distance between a continent on the bottom of the globe, you know the one us globers believe, would be extremely smaller than the travel distance traveling along an ice wall circumventing the flat earth. So let's do some math. The distance from the North Pole to the South Pole is 12,440.7 miles, which would be the radius of the flat circle earth. And the formula for the circumference of a circle is circumference equals 2 pi r, which gives us a travel distance around the earth on a flat disk of 78,167.22 miles. On the other hand, us Globers has got it into our heads by actually traveling around Antarctica and measuring the distance that the travel distance around the ice wall is only 11,165 miles, or about 14% of the travel distance you retards propose. So here's a dare for you. Do a GoFundMe, rent a boat, sail around Antarctica, and measure your travel distance until you end up where you started. And if your travel distance end up being a little over 78,000 miles, I will get down on my knees and kiss your feet and make nothing but pro flat earth videos from now on. But if on the other hand the travel distance end up just a little over 11,000 miles, you will do the same, except you will only make anti-flat earth videos from now on. The gauntlet has been dropped, you retards. Are you a man or a pussy? Come on, I dare you. I freaking double dare you. And if not, shut the fuck up about the retarded ice wall. But okay, let's see your so-called evidence for an ice wall. When we look at a Gleason's map from 1892 that states at the top that it's scientifically and practically correct, as is. We see this Antarctic ice rim. The Gleason's map is basically an azimuthal equidistant projection, which can be traced back to the year 1000. The AE map is also an official map of the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, and the official logo for the United Nations. <laughs> okay, so a map from 1892, the Gleason map. Well, first off, I don't give a crap about what some map says. That is not proof of anything. But second, let's look a little closer at this. In Flat Earth Circles, famous map. First, let's look in the top left corner. What does it say? I can't see it. Oh yes, Longitude and Time Calculator. So this is a map for calculating longitude. You know, the lines on the Earth going from the North Pole to the South Pole and time zones. Hmm, maybe that's important. I'll tell you what, let's get back to why that's important. There are a few more things on the map that are curious. 
For instance, there seems to be something sticking out from the middle and torn off at around 30 degrees north. What is that about? Maybe a calculation device? A measuring device? I don't know, who can tell? Then there are the Roman numerals around the edge of the Earth. They must serve some function. Hmm. Wait, there are 24 of them. How many hours was it there was in a day? And could that have something to do with the time calculation thingy? I guess we'll never know. Then at the top it says, on the projection of J.S. Christopher, Modern College, Blackheath, England. Hmm, projection. I think that means it is derived from some other shape, maybe a globe. Ah, uh, then again, what do I know? Then the video made much ado about nothing about the words as it is, and scientifically and practically correct. If only we could find out what Gleason actually meant when he wrote that. I know, let's take a look at his US patent application from 1895, in which he writes, The map is not so extorted as to lose the relative latitude and longitude of any places on the land or sea, but retains all latitudes and longitudes of places agreeing with other recognized authors. And as the proper relation of continents and countries all stand in the relative position to each other, they are thus impressed upon the mind of the student. The extortion of the map from that of a globe consists mainly in the straightened out of the meridian lines allowing each to retain their original value from Greenwich the equator to the two poles. Wait, what was that? The extortion of the map from that of a globe consists? So Gleason, the very author of the map, thought the Earth was a globe? Well, isn't that interesting? So why the projection onto a flat surface with the North Pole in the center? Well, this type of projection is known as an azimuthal equidistant projection and has been known for over a thousand years. And because it, as Gleason himself states in his patent application, preserved both latitude and longitude distances, and also preserved the relative distances between the continents and countries, it has many applications in both navigation, telecommunication, and military planning. Maybe that's why it's used by the US Geological Survey and the logo of the UN. Nah, what do I know, right? I'm clearly just speculating here. Oh, and by the way, an azimuthal projection doesn't even have to be centered around the pole, north or south. You can make an azimuthal projection centered around anywhere on the globe. I put a link in the description to where you yourself can play around with this concept. Hmm, it almost seems like this map doesn't prove anything related to a flat earth. Who would have guessed? The oldest known globe in the world is from 1492. Okay. So you're saying that just because we don't have any preserved globes earlier than 1492 and maps dating back a couple of thousand years, maps are the correct representation of the Earth? Wow, that's so retarded that I just dropped 15 IQ points just entertaining the idea. Just wow. The idea that we have made no progress in knowledge since the Sumerians 6,000 years ago, hence older equals more accurate, is just so mind-numbingly stupid that I'm actually at a loss for words. Wow. Just wow. Also, although maps are older than globes, the early maps like the Hecatus map from 500 BC and the Carte Pomponius Mela map from 43 BC and even the Tabula Rogeriana map from 833 were only of the known world at the time and hence only of a relatively small area of the globe, and therefore nowhere near the world maps we know today, meaning using them as examples of better maps is meaningless. The first map that actually approximates the world as we know it today was the Ortelis map from 1570. Wait, wasn't the first globe from 1492, almost 80 years earlier? Wouldn't that mean that in your estimations, of old being better, that the globe was right? Nah, don't think we can expect consistency from a flat earther. Just something for you to think about though. And also, it isn't until the Gleason map in 1892, 400 freaking years after the first globe, that we see the first map of the entire world as we know it, using the azimuthal equidistant projection, which on a surface inspection, maybe if you squint a little, 
can be construed as a flat earth with Antarctica circling it. So again, wouldn't that make globes as they are older, 400 years older, more accurate? Just using your own logic here, buddy. This is something you need to keep in mind because many people argue that the azimuthal equidistant map is just a flattened out version of the globe, when in fact the globe is just a rounded version of this true world flat map. Well, not according to the author of the map, Gleason, who, as we saw, himself believed the Earth was a globe. If the flat map came first and it has the ability to convert into a globe without any problems whatsoever, then that should tell you a little bit about how this globe deception was achieved. What deception? Gleason believed the Earth was a globe. Globes came before flat world maps. Oh, and you forgot to ask, if the Earth is a globe, why use maps at all? Could it be that because sailors need references to navigate, they need something to measure and calculate from? And could it be that maps just are better than globes for that purpose? Could it, you fucking retard? Could it be that? Now, back to if there is an edge or not. There is no proof that there is an edge past the Antarctic ice wall. Good. At least we agree on that. But it is speculated by many that perhaps the plane that we live on is either extremely expansive or it's possibly endless. <laughs> you said it yourself. It is speculated, meaning no proof and giving all the other stuff no reason to believe it. Actually quite the contrary. In these two scenarios, it would be logically assumed that more land is being hidden from the general public. What land? Again with the pure speculation and fiction writing. Come on, dude. Be better than this. In a 1954 interview with Admiral Richard E. Byrd, an American naval officer who specialized in exploration, he had this to say. But strangely enough, there is left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. Implying that there is more land past Antarctica. If that uninhabited land was on a globe, it would be in the Indian Ocean. What? The Indian Ocean? What the hell have you been smoking? He is clearly talking about the land mass of Antarctica, which is 5,400,000 square miles which he is comparing to the land mass of the United States, which is only 3,796,742 square miles. Again, come on, dude. And even if he meant what you are implying, one man's testimony, no matter who it is, or how distinguished the person might be, is not proof of anything without corroborating evidence. Just saying. A recent discovery of an old Buddhist map in a newspaper from 1907 seems to support the idea of a vast plain with much more land. <sighs> okay, now we are back to old maps are better and more accurate than newer maps. Oh, and the map comes from the January 11, 1907 edition of the Hawaiian Gazette, which is the first mention of this thousand year old map in history. And because of the similarities with the stories of the Sino map, and the Sina Halpin map, both proven hoaxes, and the fact that the Hawaiian Gazette routinely printed hoaxes, like the Grand Canyon hoax in 1909 and the Atlantic's hoax in 1912, let's just keep skeptical when it comes to this map, shall we? Okay, that was question one debunked. Subscribe and click the bell as to not miss the debunking of question two. Peace out.